I normally give a uh, sort of brief summary of how the ABI is progressing at, the, at these talks. Um, but just to start today, um, Amit and Haimo asked me to talk a little bit about the background, how, how ABI came um, into existence. So I'm going to go right back just with a couple of slides to talk about a little bit of prehistory. Um, so this is me at Oxford in a physiology lab. And um, I actually started primarily doing experimental work and then realized that <coughs> um, modeling seemed a much preferable way of handling biology than this sort of thing. So the first um, talk I can discover that, I think this is probably the first talk I ever gave, which was at the Mathematical Institute at Oxford in 1974 on the mathematical model of the left ventricle. Um, so the origins of the ABI really started when I came back to New Zealand in just before 1980 and I met up with Bruce who had just come back from Imperial College where he did his PhD and we, Bruce was in physiology and we decided to get together to combine experimental work with modeling to look at cardiac function. And then out of that came a whole series of PhD students, not, not all supervised by us, but many of them with Bruce and me and Bruce. And you'll recognize many of these names as being really the people that um, became the heart of the ABI. So really the, the background to the ABI goes back to the early 80s and 80s and 90s when a number of people who did their PhD with Bruce and I and also with Andrew Pullen um, then went on to establish their own research groups and of course many of these people are now the, the main PIs at the API. It's a wee bit embarrassing looking at this list that there's only one woman, Marin. Um, so it was very male dominated initially but um, that got put right at least to some extent later on, particularly with Marin's uh, lung group. Um, but I think we're in better shape now than we were back then but th these are really how the ABI got started. So within the University of Auckland ecosystem, um, you know, immediately after that series of students that I just showed, we established a faculty research institute which was based in the engineering faculty and closely linked with the Department of Engineering Science. Um, and then in 2008 we established a large scale research institute which made us independent of, the, of any given faculty. Um, and so that's how we sit now with um, the, the ABI and the Liggins being the two large-scale research institutes in the university and sitting alongside the faculties in the university structure. Um, and then within the New Zealand ecosystem, in 2012, Dai Su and I, Dai was at um, IRL at that stage and then Callaghan, um, and she and I established this consortium for medical device technologies involving all the four major centres of research and translation in biomedical engineering around New Zealand. And, and that was used to launch the medical technologies core in 2015, which Marin is now the director of and which is just at the moment in the rebid phase. Um, so the way that I think about what we do is summarized here. So we, we bridge discovery to application science and I think that's the real power of having a very multidisciplinary environment where we think both about basic science and about translation and outcomes um, in these areas of bioengineering, computational physiology, medtech and now of course with our two new um, particularly with Seringa and Mark Klinghurst, we've got an ARVR part of our operation. Um, so a good way of thinking about how our income is used is we have basic science grants, philanthropic donations, which lead to, which fund the actual work in all of these different research themes. And the output of that is our journal papers and patents, essentially. Um, but because New Zealand has New Zealand government 
does full cost funding. That means that we get overhead money as part of those basic science research grants. And those overheads go to fund the admin infrastructure for the ABI and also the development of tools, et cetera, and labs that are shared across everyone in the ABI. So we couldn't do it without that overhead scenario that exists in New Zealand. Um, and then we get money for training PhD students from the government, where the output is jobs, of course, and also um, business investment. And so we have money flow that, in a sense, leads to outputs that are in the jobs, clinical trials, spin-out companies um, area, but always building on the basic science end of that spectrum. Our income over the last 10 years has tripled from 2009, 2019, um, and no, no sign of slowing down. I mean, we, we never deliberately try and grow, but we somehow just seem to keep on growing, keep on worrying about space. Um, and in terms of people, um, this goes back to 2005, but um, we're now close to 300 full-time people and a lot of more temporary, shorter-term visitors and so on. But it's, it's quite a, I mean, as we've grown, we've had to change structures to cope with handling a much larger operation. Um, and in terms of grad students, I mean, I think this is a really interesting change from the early days as well. I mean, all our original students were all locally born. 70% of our grad students now are international. And from 36 different countries, shown here, um, and with new ones being added all the time. So the ones in blue there are ones that have a new in the last 12 to 18 months. And if you look at where our students come from, it's shown here and postdocs, um, and there's a few gaps that we need to fill. Um, so in a few weeks' time, Gonzalo and I are going on a recruiting program to Latin America because I think it seems crazy that we don't have more students coming from Latin America, given its proximity to New Zealand. Um, so I think there's great opportunities there. Um, so I'd just like to welcome new staff who joined us in 2019, um, shown here. And um, as I do in all of these presentations, I'd just like to acknowledge the professional staff at the ABI that we are totally dependent on for the whole operation to be successful. And I think, um, you know, all the academics hugely appreciate the work that our professional staff do. Um, and that's the professional staff team has increased in recent times because of the university moving a number of people that would have been in a central research operation admin operation are now within the ABI and I think that's working really, really well and people really appreciate the personal contact that they have with um, our research admin staff. But right across the board, um, both for the, the administrative work and also the software development and workshop facilities and lab running labs, all the people that help make the operation um, work, it's a lot more than just the academics. I'd also like just to mention that in terms of, because it started with a bit of a historical theme, um, Maria has been with us almost from the beginning. And if you noticed um, the, well, I haven't come to it yet, but when you see the, the income statement, you'll see the perfectly balanced budgets that we have each year. And a lot of the credit for that goes to Maria. Um, and Tiong is, is who's in, among our, in our IT staff. He's been with us almost since the beginning as well. And Richard Christie, um, very, very long-term involvement with the ABI. So new grants in 2019. We are, of course, always dependent. We run on largely on soft money. We de we're dependent on people making grant applications and successfully bringing in new money with overheads where possible to support the infrastructure. But um, here's some of the new grants in 2019. Um, and I'd like to congratulate a number of people last year for awards. So we have two new fellows of the Royal Society in New Zealand, Marin and Simon. Um, and Peng got the Prime Minister's McDermott 
Emerging Researcher Award, Finn Barr got an award to NASA, Mark Billinghurst won um, second of two very prestigious international awards in virtual reality, Seringa Exchange Fellowship, um, David Budget and Simon won the Vice Chancellor's Commercialization Medal last year, and Ji Chao won the University of Auckland Research Excellence Medal. And then to cap it off last year, I think you know this was just fantastic news at the end of 2019 that we have three new professors in the ABI, Ian, Tor and Andrew, and they'll be giving their inaugural professorial talks um, later on this year. So as everyone here I think knows, we have linkages all over the world, and, and I think it's an absolutely crucial part of the ABI's operation is that we're very closely tied into research across all the fields that we work in um, right around the world. Um, so I'd just mention a little bit about occupancy issues. We're always short of space. Um, but we've been, and, and of course we're in rented accommodation that's not really designed as a laboratory building, but we make it work. And I think um, a lot of the renovation that's occurred in the last couple of years has made a big difference. Um, we moved into the eighth floor, which is <coughs> uni services moved out. We renovated the ground floor. That's working extremely well. We have a pretty good workshop um, and a lot of facilities, but clearly we're not in an ideal building. We need to be thinking about what we do in the future. And the university is very aware of that. So there's two, we will move, I would say, within certainly within five years. And there's two possibilities. One is in the gateway building on Simon Street opposite the science um, building. But there's another opportunity that's being very actively investigated, which would move us to a building on the corner of Grafton Bridge, closer to the med, closer to here, to the med school. Um, and that looks a very exciting possibility. It's too early to be sure about <coughs> that being an achievable outcome, but we're certainly going to be doing everything we can to try and make that happen. And also this year, for the, we've established this new floor, level nine, cloud nine, in the current ABI building, and Dai is managing that um, floor where we decided to move a number of our companies who were embedded within the ABI that it was better to be giving them a small distance away from the underpinning research group not too far because we want to maintain those close research linkages, but giving them a little bit more freedom to be operating as an independent um, commercial entity. And that means we can also begin to put in place all sorts of structures around engagement with investment community and so on as part of that um, floor, which I can see expanding substantially. And I think it's one of the um, really important outcomes of the ABI is our ability to create these spin-out companies that employ our students. So here, here's the picture of what's happened over the last few years with our spin-outs. So quite a lot of them and um, some pretty massive growth over the 10-year period. Um, and we, we certainly hope that we can begin to create much more of a Med tech industry sector in New Zealand. It is actually now 1.5 billion and one of the fastest growing sectors in the New Zealand economy. So, I mean, you've got to qualify that by the fact that 1 billion of it, of it is one company, Fisher and Parkle Healthcare. But nevertheless, there's, there's lots of signs of, of companies um, starting to grow very significantly. And I think we're doing our part in that growth because, in the end, it's our ability to create economic outcome from enables the application of the clinical outputs from the ABI, but also creates the jobs for our students. So what characterizes the ABI? Um, I think I showed this last year, and I think it's still entirely appropriate, that we, we have a very collegial shared vision within a multidisciplinary research environment. Um, we have close interaction between modeling, instrumentation development, and experimental work. And I think those, we never want to lose those three stalls of what we do. You need new instruments to make new measurements. Most new discoveries come because someone's thought of a new way of measuring something. 
but you need, and then you've obviously got to do the experiments using those instruments. But because biology is complex, you have to have modeling to interpret complex data. So it's the interaction between those three that is really the characteristic of the ABI. And then the fact that we try and integrate basic applied translational science uh, with a focus on clinical and commercial outcomes. You, you never want to lose the basic end because that's where all the, you don't have anything to translate if you don't have good basic science input. But if you don't have the output side, then it's hard to justify the number of PhD um, students we have in the ABI because they have to have jobs. International collaborations I've talked about, supportive environment and infrastructure, and then increasingly through our spin out companies and creating incubator spaces, our innovation environment. Um, it's interesting, 70% of the students, PhD students, master students at the ABI are international, and then if you look at where do they go, or well, 70% stay, of all, all of our graduates, stay in New Zealand. 30% now are across 20 countries, the ones that have left. Um, and I'm not, we're, we're just in the process of trying to compile these figures more accurately and to get a more accurate picture of exactly where all the graduates have gone. But roughly speaking, I think around 60% end up in our spin out companies, 20% in various, um, usually companies like Fisher and Parkle Healthcare or Orion Health that are um, uh, closely linked to what we do. And, and Ian McRae, who's an ex-student um, of engineering science student, who's the head of Orion Health, um, has told me that they absolutely love the students, the PhD students that they get from the ABI. So I think, and the same with Fisher and Parkle Healthcare. So I think we're in a good position in terms of getting having a flow of students into these existing large health-related companies, but doing our best to try and create a lot more of those type of companies through our spin-outs. And then a, and a relatively small fraction, of course, will end up in academia, post-grads and, and academic staff. 